the question is all are true about the carcinoma of the lower lip except so this image over here is primarily for you to identify how the carcinoma of the lower lip is and uh, also i have written down certain points so that you understand as to what how to identify the carcinoma of a lower lip see when it comes to carcinomas especially of the oral cavity they are primarily squamous cell carcinomas that is SCCs, okay. So this SCC can spread from any place, from one organ, from one part of the oral cavity to the other. The entire there's a tumor classification as well for squamous cell carcinoma of the oral cavity. It's better if you uh, know it. What is the tumor number for the pharynx, the floor of the mouth, the lip, the buccal mucosa? Because they can be asked in your AIMS questions. Okay. So now. When it comes to carcinomas, most are rather squamous cell carcinomas, we all know as we've read from general surgery as well that they are all ulcerated. So they have uh, an ulcerated appearance that means there is an ulcer that the center has a floor, the floor is indurated. What is indurated is that means it is firm in nature, it will be fixed to the underlying tissues. What do you mean by fixed is that rather this is a feature or tendency of all malignancies that they end up having some form of attach attachment to the underlying muscle, bone or whatever tissue is present under, under, underneath. So when you try to move the ulcer, the entire tissue under that will also start, it will not move rather because it is very strongly attached to the underlying tissues. That is why it is, this is one of the features. Now the lip usually one important point that we need to remember that squamous cell carcinomas of the lip have a very good prognosis and why do they have a very good prognosis is because that these tumors do not spread rapidly the most the worst prognosis is usually for carcinoma of the tongue as well as the floor of the mouth because of the bilateral circulation of the lymph and the lymph drainage is very vast as a result the lymph node involvement is very quick when it comes to the tongue and the floor of the mouth. However, when it comes to the lip, the lip, the, the cervical lymph node involvement is very rare and metastasis to a different organ or different part of the oral cavity occurs very slowly, primarily because the lip squamous uh, cell carcinoma is usually contained. Secondary, even if, secondarily, even if it has to spread, it does not spread to the regional lymph nodes first, it actually ends up spreading laterally. So if this is my ulcer, it spreads in either on either side of it, so that with time the growth is slow and if need to, needed to be arrested, it can be arrested at a faster point in time. Also, squamous cell carcinomas of the lip are usually small and because they are small, an excisional biopsy can be performed, which usually contains the tumor completely. Okay. Uh, like I told you, the prognosis is very good, the progression is very slow and the surgical management of such cases is very easy like I told you because it is small in nature so you can just do an excisional biopsy and you can just close or oppose or bring back the margins together and seal the entire area. So now coming to about the all are true, so you are you're supposed to identify which is the false statement. Okay, so spreads laterally this like we discussed it does spread laterally it goes on either side and uh, lymph node in distant metastasis or lymph node regional lymph node metastasis is at a very late point in time only if the tumor continues to spread and progress over years together okay metastasis occurs early this is a false statement right because right now we just discussed that it is a very slowly progressing tumor it spreads slowly and the involvement of the regional lymph nodes also occurs at a very late stage in point in time usually shows early signs actually this is the reason why the metasta why the carcinoma of the lip has a good prognosis because see ultimately the lip is visible in the oral on the face as a result of it being appearing or visible on the face, an ulcer is going to be easily noticeable by the patient as well as people around him or her. As a result of this, the patient would want to seek treatment as soon as they notice the ulcer. And that is the reason why the early signs help in easier management and 
extremely good prognosis of such cases. So, lower lip is most commonly involved. This is again a very true statement about uh, squamous cell carcinomas of the lips. The lower lip in general has a much more higher tendency to show such features as compared to the lower upper lip. Sorry. Also, one important point that I would like to uh, point out over here is you need to know what is the difference between chelitis glandularis and chelitis granulomatosa because this can be asked as a question to you as to all are true about chelitis glandularis except or all are true about chelitis granulomatosa except. So you need to know the difference between the two. One has the upper lip involved, the other one has the lower lip involved. The glandularis has the lower lip involved, whereas granulomatosa has the upper lip involved. Also glandularis has a higher tendency to convert into squamous cell carcinoma, whereas granulomatosa has a very autoimmune appearance. The histology has been defined to be somewhat similar to a uh, sarcoidosis appearance. So these are points that you need to remember.